Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ken Espinosa and welcome to Chapter 2 of Science, Technology and Society entitled Intellectual Revolutions. So what are the learning outcomes for this chapter? One is to discuss the paradigm shifts through history. Two, explain how the intellectual revolution changed the way how humans see the world. And lastly, to describe the technological advancements that happen in the information age. So here we'll be talking about three intellectual revolutions. What are those? Just remember the acronym FreeCAD. Free stands for Freudian Revolution by Sigmund Freud. Co stands for Copernican Revolution by Nicholas Copernicus. And lastly, D stands for Darwin Revolution by Charles Darwin. First, let's talk about the Freudian Revolution. So here we'll be talking about psychoanalysis, which pertains to the study that explains human behavior. Sigmund Freud explained that there are many conscious and conscious factors that can influence behavior and emotions. This psychoanalysis is also a set of theories and therapeutic techniques related to the study of unconscious mind. A good example of this is in terms of a person's development, which is determined by often forgotten events in the early childhood rather than by inherited traits alone. The primary assumption of psychoanalysis is the belief that all people possess unconscious thoughts, feelings, desires, and memories, which has an aim to release repressed emotions and experiences, making the unconscious thoughts conscious. For example, you are not aware that you are falling in love right now. The smile, the eye contact, the emotional bonding, the happiness, and the desire to be with her is all everything you wanted then you realize consciously you're in love with the person you're with then you realize it affected your behavior and emotion from the first time you were in love with her he also argued that personality is a product of three conflicting elements what are those the id ego and super ego when we talk about the id it pertains to pleasure principle sexual energy sexual drive in layman's term, it pertains to bad or devil side of your personality, while superego pertains to your moral principle, good side of your personality, and it fights with the id. Then ego is your reality principle. It balances the id and superego. However, sometimes there is a disequilibrium between the id and superego. Sometimes the id dominates, sometimes not. Sometimes the superego dominates, or sometimes not. A good example of this is your desire to eat chocolate and a relation of not eating chocolate. Your id says, I want chocolate because it's delicious and it's pleasurable. But your superego says, you're on a diet. Your sugar level is at the borderline. You are at risk of having diabetes. But your ego, or reality principle, balances the two demands of the id and superego. Your ego says, for you to have both pleasure and at the same time control, you eat a small bar of chocolate. Let's now move on to the Copernican Revolution. In early times, People questioned what created days and night. They wanted to understand what heavenly bodies like stars, moons, and planets are. The invention of the telescope made the people to take a peek at the outer space. But more importantly, it also captivated them to know what was actually out there. Claudius Ptolemy, a famous philosopher and astronomer, postulated a theory known as geocentric model. J pertains to Earth, and centrism refers to the center, which stated that planets, as well as the sun and moon, move 
in a circular motion around the Earth, making the Earth the center of the solar system. Ptolemy's geocentric model was widely accepted by the people in the past and one of the greatest discoveries of that time. Then, in the 16th century, a Polish mathematician and astronomer, namely Nicolaus Copernicus, postulated a new concept known as heliocentrism. Helio pertains to sun, and centrism refers to the center, which suggested that the center of the solar system was not the Earth, but actually the sun. The idea was rejected at the first by the public, but eventually this concept was accepted because of certain proofs on technologies. In this new beginning, the period of modern astronomy has begun. The most controversial of all revolutions is the Darwin Revolution. The Darwin Revolution is generally taken to be one of the key events in the history of Western science. In recent years, however, the very notion of a scientific revolution has come under attack, and in the specific case of Charles Darwin and his origin of species, there are serious questions about the nature of change and the specifically Darwin input. In this theory, he introduced a theory of evolution which postulated that population passed through a process of natural selection in which only the fittest would survive. He stated that organisms have the ability to adapt their environment and would gradually change into something that would be more competitive to survive, which is a process known as evolution. In this particular theory, we have four factors. What are those? Just remember the acronym VASH. V stands for variation. O stands for overproduction. S stands for survival of the fetus. H stands for heritability. First, let's talk about variation. Variation is the key ingredient for survival of the species. And those species who have suitable variation that benefits them have higher chances of survival than those species who have no variation or who lack beneficial variation. Some variation are more favorable to environment than others, that's why they survive. Next, we have overproduction, which pertains to more organisms are produced that can actually survive. Naturally occurring species have a tendency to produce far more offspring that can possibly survive. There are no enough resources such as food, water, and space to support them. As you can see on the figure, based on the studies, sea turtles lay from 70 to 100 eggs, depending on the species. On average, 1 out of 100 survive. Young turtles are on their own after they hatch. Very few survive to maturity due to predation and competition for resources. Third is the survival of the fetus. According to Charles Darwin, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. As you can see on the figure, those giraffes who are responsive to change survive. Those giraffes with longer neck can actually survive because they can eat foods from the taller trees, while those giraffes with short neck died because of hungerness. And lastly, Heritability or inheritance. Changes in the organism brought by an environment will be inherited by their offspring. So as you can see on the figure, variations are inherited. The best suited variants leave more offspring.